we as a people should not rely on you know big entities to feed us but i believe that food security is you know a very very important responsibility for the family for the basic unit for an individual and we have seen the effects of natural disasters and calamities if we just had our own food security then i believe that couldn't have been as bad as that Most of us wouldn't even know where to start when it comes to growing our own food. And I think that's really sad because it's completely disconnected from just the natural way of things. I'm on my way to meet Moses. And Moses specializes in things like cayenne, turmeric, and ginger, but has also set up a food security system in his own backyard, which is something I think we should all strive to eventually. I started farming back in college. I had the fear that my allowance was going to be cut, so I wanted to find a way how I could earn. I was in my front yard and lots of soil, so I said, why not farming? I went to my mom and just observed what they were doing. They were planting some gingers on a relatively small scale in the front yard. And I wanted to do something different because ginger at that time was grown using a lot of chemicals. So I wanted to grow organic ginger, start earning from that. I was studying AB political science. I was prepped to become a lawyer like my father, but I was really passionate about organic farming, seeing the need for naturally grown food. When I finished AB political science, I right away just went full-time organic farming. It's actually God who wanted me to go into organic farming, not so much as to produce organic food, but to reach out to the tribal communities of the mountains. I wanted to have their own family food security system, but to also heal their land, because a lot of their land has been abused by the use of a lot of chemical fertilizers, a lot of pesticides. And years and years ago, they had their own seed stocks of different Filipino vegetables. They had their own seeds of their heirloom rice. And so a lot of that just disappeared over time due to the modern theory of chemical farming. In Farm One, I call it the family food security area, is where we grow Filipino vegetables that we eat on a day-to-day -day basis. These are Filipino vegetables like alubati, kangkong, kamote, lutia, and gabi, so they're easy to grow. So the other portion of our farm is our agro-industrial area. So here we grow our spices, uh, such as cayenne pepper, uh, our gingers, and turmeric, which are used for our disposable income. So that's how we establish a livelihood with the uh, tribal communities. This is cow dung, uh, cow manure. And it doesn't smell too, doesn't actually, it doesn't smell yeah. like anything. Yeah. yeah, okay. It's already fully decomposed actually, because we ferment it. Um, okay. We take fresh cow manure and then we put it in a drum and then so we ferment everything and then after 14 days we just put it on top of the soil so it still pretty much looks the same but if we just crumble it up like this you just get a really nice you know chunk here and then you just squeeze it out like that and then so you can see that it's really nice and mushy so the plants love this because it's an excellent source of humus where you know a lot of minerals and a lot of nutrients are uh, kept so it's it's it increases the nutrient holding capacity of the soil because the more organic matter you add into it so here it, it stays yes, it inside stays right here. Okay. and then that's why it's so moist yes. and, and warm yeah i really love farming and what i feel is that i connect to a very primal mandate given by the lord it gives me that feeling that you know the lord is pleased with you know what i'm doing because i'm healing the land and so the more plants that i that i grow the more seeds that i produce uh, the more people that we connect with and heal their lands it gives me the satisfaction that you know i'm being a good steward of the lord when i touch the soil when i hold the soil it gives me a perspective as to the current state and health of the soil because our objective is to really get the soil to a living soil where there are a lot of symbiotic relationships of beneficial microorganisms and beneficial predator insects. A few years back, we had this really bad flood 
called Sendong, where all of a sudden there was big rain, so the rivers and streams could no longer contain the volume of water. Had there been trees, then the trees would have prevented siltation and the riverbeds would have been able to contain uh, much more volume. Uh, the beauty with organic agriculture is we do need a lot of silt as well because uh, it's really rich in minerals. So when uh, the water was gone and all the silt was here, it's actually uh, a blessing in disguise because then we had lots and lots of minerals here. So the drought was caused by a lot of different factors. Trees are uh, a very key component of rain. And so when a lot of trees have been cut down, rainfall is drastically reduced. I feel that um, a lot of people can contribute to agriculture by starting their own family food security in their own house if they have a front yard. When they grow their food, not only does it give them a glimpse of you know, the energy behind agriculture and food production, but it gives them an opportunity to connect with nature and you know, to break the barrier that uh, modernization has put. So this is our cayenne pepper area. And so this is where we grow um, our cayenne peppers on top of the raised beds. Okay. Uh, so the reason why we do it in raised beds is that so we have, you know, this microclimate under the soil. Yeah. It's raised also because we want as much as possible like the bacteria to live um, in the raised beds. We want all the beneficial fungus, all the beneficial worms. And all this stuff. The beds. What's, what's and, all the stuff um, that goes here? Actually, this is our uh, fresh fertilizer, so um, we utilize all our manures. But in terms of production-wise, I, I, I noticed that actually uh, the presence of pest and disease are less. Because of the peppers. Because of the peppers yeah. and the turmeric together, but as to the taste, I have yet to okay. experiment. Can I try one of them? Sure. This one? Uh, is, is, are these? Yeah, these are ready. Cool. Yeah, that's a chili pepper. <laughs> that's a real chili pepper. It's not fake, guys. It's real. <laughs> we always want to keep the seeds. So this, the number of seeds that come out means the number of plants? Yes. Okay. So this is, uh, one seed is basically one pepper plant. My lips are burning. <laughs> it's like natural lipstick. That works. <laughs> I think it's really cool that Moses has this food security system at home and kind of gets to geek out and plant different plants and vegetables and things like that. It kind of just brings you to a space where you basically can eat hyper-local and you eat everything that's around you and can be prepared as well. He was kind enough to give us one of his lovely chickens right here who actually produced the manure to make compost that helped grow everything. So it's, it's a really cool cycle how it all comes together. So I thought with today's dish, I'd kind of mimic that as well. So I'm gonna make a version of a shakshuka. So we're gonna first start by making the tomato stew. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one onion, chop that up. In my pan, a little bit of oil and some of my onions. I just really want to cook these down and just get that natural sweetness and caramelization. To that, I'm going to add in some garlic. I'm still going to get everything nice and soft. Chop up this beautiful cayenne pepper from the farm right behind me. I'm going to keep the seeds because I want this to be really nice and hot. And then Moses brought me this really cool young ginger. As you can see, what he was explaining to me, they actually grew they put this part in to grow and it just kind of just blossomed into this beautiful root. Um, so this is about three months old. So with young ginger, what's amazing is that it's gonna be really kind of citrusy and just nice and lemony and not too pungent. You can basically eat young ginger quite raw like this and it's not too strong. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of my tomatoes here. I just wanna cook that down until everything's nice and mushy. And then I'm gonna add half of my green pepper here. A little bit of salt. And I'm gonna go ahead and flavor that with my McCormick spices. So I've got a tad bit of cumin. So this really just brings up some great Middle Eastern flavor. Got some Spanish paprika. And finally, a little bit of my cloves. Finally, to all this, I'm gonna go ahead and just add rosemary sprig just to really get some great flavor in there. So I'm gonna keep cooking this down for about five more minutes. So this comes from Moses' actual backyard. Um, and what's great about kind of these native farm chickens, you'll see that they don't have much meat on them, but they're really just really flavorful, which is really what I want and really what I like. 
Once my chicken is broken down, I'm gonna go ahead and just select the parts that I'm gonna be using for this dish. The tomato mix is basically ready, so all we're gonna do is just kind of transfer that into our bowl here. Add a bit more oil to my pan, and then we can go ahead and just start cooking the chicken. So I'm just gonna go ahead and season that with some salt, get some more of my fresh herbs there, and just throw them into the oil, just to really give the oil a beautiful aroma. Grab the chicken and just place that in there. And now all we have to do is kind of wait for all that to cook nicely. Got a nice beautiful color on one side. We're gonna go ahead and add in some thyme, just so that we have more flavor in there. We're gonna go ahead and add in our tomato and onion mix. Let all those flavors come together. Once the chicken is cooked, we're just gonna go ahead and keep this to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly cook my eggs. So a little bit of olive oil again. Grab these beautiful organic eggs. Season that with a little bit of salt. So we can go ahead and just start plating everything. So I've got all this beautiful stew here. Place in my eggs, more of my chicken pieces. Then we're gonna go ahead and finish all that with just some more of our fresh herbs here from the garden and some of the cayenne seedlings. And then just to finish off, a little bit of my paprika powder. So it's kind of like a deconstructed shakshuka, but respects all the ingredients in there. It's really simple stuff, kind of quick recipe. And to cook in this kind of environment with the cayennes right behind me, just makes me happy. When is the last time you put your hands in fertile soil, felt its warmth, its life source? Most people are put off by the idea of natural fertilizers, the color of soil, the propagation of worms, the shit chickens leave on the ground. But they have no issues putting some fried chicken in their mouth. How did we reach this level of hypocrisy? Moses believes in food security. Whatever his reasons may be, I stand by him. In a country where 13.5% of our population is considered undernourished, shouldn't this be a bigger conversation topic? Imagine, close to 15 million people are left wanting for food every day, both in the provinces and in our big cities. Obviously, I don't want to simplify the problem. There are many reasons that we've come to this, from a lack of political will to an increasing overpopulation issue. The end is far from sight. With this in mind, I was surprised to find out that the average age of our local farmers is 57. What will happen when younger generations refuse to farm? our malnutrition problem will quickly become an all-consuming crisis. Food security is essential for survival. Farmers need to be encouraged, motivated, empowered, and made proud of what they do. Non-farmers need to be made aware of these issues and see how they can lend their skills or business towards sustainable food production practices to ensure that the generations that come after us eat well, a basic human right. I leave you with the words of Thomas Jefferson. Agriculture is our wisest pursuit because it will, in the end, contribute most to real wealth, good morals, and happiness. Hey guys, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate you stopping by and checking out our recipes, our travel videos, and everything else that we do. If you want to see more, please make sure to click the videos around me or click the subscribe tag right here.